Good morning, East Torrington. It's a different speaker, so I have a different level, I think, all of a sudden. It's great to be home. It's great to have all of you join us. Welcome, welcome. If you're here for the first time, in front of you, you'll see some white cards. I'd love for you to just fill that out. Let us know that you're here. Uh, if you'd like anything, please just uh, make a little comment. If you'd like a phone call or, or prayers, special prayers, uh, whatever it is, uh, a lot of times you can do that in the cards. But if not, I usually greet people after the church outside. You're more than welcome to uh, say hello then. And uh, we also have deacons and, and trustees and ushers. You'll see a lot of them with their pins. Uh, approach them, let us know that you're here. And if you need anything, uh, that's what we're here for, is, is to, to be a fellowship, a community that wants to work together. But most importantly, we're here today to just worship our God and to praise God in, in every sense of the word. I see a lot of these blue shirts. I don't, I don't know what that is about, but um, good. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you are here. Uh, it's great, and I hear that VBS went really well. Um, and again, um, I, I don't think I speak out of line, um, but thank you to all the volunteers, all the volunteers that made this happen. Um, you know, again, there's a sadness to that and a joy in that. A sadness is that, you know, it really takes a paid staff person to bring it all together. Um, I'd love to think volunteers can just do everything, but they can't. They need the support. And so that just, again, I say that because it's so important for you to realize why it was important for us to begin a process of, of bringing somebody on to, to make these things able to coordinate them and make them work. But Doug will be the first one to say, it could not happen without all the volunteers. And a big thank you, by the way, to all the teachers that gave up part of their week of, of their vacation time during the summer, uh, just donated their time here, and uh, just, just wonderful, just wonderful thing to, to be able to see from a distance. I, I kept it on board through Facebook, but also I was able to watch the children's presentation of their music, a little bit without sound, but overall it was, it was okay, it was okay. So welcome, people, and it's good to have everybody. Um, September 11th is rally day for Sunday school and for our youth programs, but we're also combining that. So rally day actually will be starting about 9.30 in the morning. Um, I know in the bulletin it says 11.30 to 1.30, but that is only for the barbecue. The rally day really starts earlier than that with our Sunday school. We hope that uh, parents will come in, bring some children, ask questions, sign up for that, you know, have a little sampling of what Sunday school is about. And then it will continue throughout the morning to a barbecue, um, and they'll learn more information, whoever will be coming on, uh, to that about Sunday school, youth programs, what, what, what is the reason, what is VBS and all these other programs. Also missions uh, will, be, will be in this part. September 10th, um, another busy day because Allison's going to do the yard sale all by herself. She wants absolutely no help. Okay. I'm, I'm exaggerating. We do need help. Um, please contact Allison in the office. And again, if you have anything that might be good for the yard sale, we want it in very good condition, please. Um, in, in the past couple years, we've gotten a lot of stuff that just goes right to the dump, and we're doing the work when you could just simplify it by just putting it in the dump in the first place. And then also September 3rd, I think it is, is our bean supper. Uh, again, we'd love for you to support that. It should be a great time. Ah, <sighs> it's good to be home, but a lot of busy things going on. Oh, actually, we have two old people here who have an anniversary. I'm looking at them. How many years? How many years? Is that correct, Bill? Now, see, I, I didn't want to look at and ask Bill that because I didn't want to put on the spot and him say, I don't know. But, so... <laughs> So I did it backwards. He, you figured it out. 57, a great number. Well, congratulations. And also, upstairs, uh, as you know, Dan covers the soundboard and stuff, but we have a person behind the cameras that's been doing really good. He also was here for VBS week doing some filming for that, I believe, correct? Um, and he also is celebrating a birthday. Well, not an anniversary, but a birthday. So happy birthday upstairs to Patrick Mead.
Okay, nothing better. I just saw three of the kids that were B VBS in the back that stood around and, and clapped up to him. So, so that was nice. Um, so wonderful things going on. That's what, I think that's part of what church is about, a fellowship of believers that we can kind of let that go away for just a little bit. And we come in here to worship our God, to be in awe and reverence, to really just taste him, be in his presence. And that's what we do when we bring the light of Christ in. We, we are invoking each of us to understand that the presence of God is real. And he's here with us right now as we bring the light of Christ into today's sanctuary. world was such that it was that simple that we can just walk together work together and bring a light for others to see let us God's people work towards that and let us pray together let us pray gracious and holy God Father we come before you oftentimes just we come before you praising your holy name which is what we should be doing but we also should be coming in awe and reverence, knowing that you are a jealous God, that you are a God of consuming fire. You are a God of mercy and love, that you give us an inner peace and an inner hope, a joy that cannot be given in any other way. Oh, Lord, I, I give you all honor and glory and thanks. Father, I also lift up those that can't be here today. I pray for... Ruth Rooney and where she is right now. Father, I pray for her health and her well-being. I pray for Darcy's dad, who um, is certainly struggling every day in life. And yet we praise you, O oh Lord, that he's conscious enough to talk and, and uh, to have conversation once again. Lord, we pray for all those that are on different paths, different journeys. Father, I pray for our president and all elected officials. I pray for us as people of this country that we're watching and seeing things that we should not have to be part of. I pray for peace. Lord, I pray that the community in which we live here in Orrington that we uh, worship in Remain strong and faithful to you, O Lord. 
I'm always honored, oh Lord, whenever uh, the, the politics of this town calls and just asks for prayers to be part of a decision-making process. I'm in awe of that, oh Lord, because I know you hear our prayers. Father, I give you thanks, personal thanks, for the ability that I had for the past few weeks to spend time with my incredible family. I thank you for every moment that we have. And yet, Lord, at, at the same time, I, I yearn to be here, to be part of this fellowship. But I thank you, O oh Lord, that they allowed this to happen. Lord, I thank you for the activities that happened, the Vacation Bible School, the concert. I thank you, O oh Lord, for putting um, troubles in Doug's path that led him to, to seek a different role. I thank you for his wife, as I thank my wife daily, for putting up with the nonsense at times, for loving me despite sometimes what I think or what I do. But Lord, they reflect your love for us, that you love us unconditionally in our good times and in our flaws. Father, we thank you for the gift that we have living in this great country. I thank you for the fellowship we share within this church. Lord, I can look at the things that we need, the wrongs or the, the, the desires, but Lord, I choose to focus on the many that volunteer and step up. I choose to focus on the committees that are working in missions and education in deacons and trustees to make every day a little bit better here in this community and in the life of this church. Father, I thank you that the church is available to those outside of our immediate family here to do simple things like a piano recital or to host teachers or to bring in a Sunday school group, I mean a, a, a Girl Scout troop in special times. Father, so many good things happen when we come together and we put you first. Lord, I pray for the soldiers that defend this great country. I pray for all our military families. I pray for those that find separation at this time a, a challenge and hardship. I pray for the soldiers and the families to, to open their hearts, to entertain a peace that you and you alone can offer them despite the, the difficulties. I pray this for our police and our firefighters. I especially hold up uh, the officers here in this town who uh, are doing their job so well. And the experience we just recently have, um, they handled it and are handling it even at this very moment. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to work with other community members, both secular and within our faith community. I thank you for the ecumenical group that this church belongs to and will soon gather once again on Thanksgiving to, to celebrate. Father, I hold up in prayer and I, and I pray that we're all doing that, looking for a leader to lead our choir and other musical talents in this church. Lord, hear my prayers in this. Father, I pray for our frontline workers. I pray for all our teachers. Many will be going back to school this week and beginning. I pray for our students who will be uh, joining them very shortly. Lord, I pray for their well-being, but I also pray that those that are on the road will take caution. There will be a lot more activities and uh, things going on around the school systems. Lord, I also pray that sports do not take a priority over you. May we do everything in your name. And may we praise you, O oh Lord. Father, I welcome back Tamara. I give you all glory that she's back with us. Um, I, I know she's been a few weeks, but uh, I am now with her too. I give you glory for that. Lord, so many things running through my head. And at this time, O oh Lord, I want to just take a moment of silent prayer so each of us can lift up our joys and, and concerns to you at this very moment.
Our mighty and holy God, I, uh, we lift these prayers to you, and we know you hear our prayers. We know you hear when we pray for our sister churches. We pray for all the mission projects that are going on. We pray for uh, Pastor Wilbins and others who are in difficult situations and yet still glorifying your name. Oh Lord, be with us on this day and every day as we work to give you the glory in our life. For it is you who gave us this life. Father, I pray this and ask all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we turn to him, O Lord, remembering the prayer he taught us to pray. It says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who set us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please. incredible time at uh, Vacation Bible School and for the concerts. We had 30 kids here, um, which is great. And we have some of them here this morning. We have others that, uh, that came in from other churches. We have people who are thinking about coming to church. This whole Vacation Bible School was designed to be transformational, not just for the kids, but for the staff um, and the parents as well, and, and I've already gotten some comments that, that make it very clear that through the Holy Spirit, that was able to happen. So we wanted to sing to you our theme song called Chain Breaker, and uh, this is by Zach Williams. So I'm excited to have a good showing of kids, but especially the staff as well, who um, I need to tell you before I even go any further, um, when we came up with this idea, I had no idea what I was doing, and thank God for the Holy Spirit, because he guided us the whole way and brought all the necessary people. Um, I could not believe the number of people who, when I reached out, said yes. And that is so much of our journey with God, is just saying yes. So, chain breaker. And I'm going to look on with you if it's okay, Joy. Oh, I've got the lyrics, good. Been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice for the same old lies. And if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain. Change. 
So I, uh, you know, it's, it's been an interesting few weeks as I don't usually have a long time to chew on a scripture. And this was kind of a curveball that, that came up to me on this song and this thing. So I'm going to ask upstairs if they would put the unison prayer up. I'm going to go right into the scripture and the message um, because of this song. And I'm going to try to connect everything through the song, but... I think we have an opportunity here to kind of clarify for those that may be lost, for those that may be in pain, because the scripture that I'm going to be using really talks about that. And, and, and Paul is incredible how he speaks, but it's a, it's a confusing one. So if you just read this without it, I don't know if we'd get the idea that our God is ready to take that away from us and, and put it on himself. And so... I, I, I ask you to join with me in our unison prayer uh, that will be found uh, on the screens at this time, if you join with me. Lord, upon the pages of this book is your story. It is also our story. Open our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, our minds that they may understand, and our hearts that they may be changed. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the passages that I'm going to be reading today comes from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 12, verses 18 through 29. And also we're going to be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 13, 10 through 17. But I'm really going to be concentrating on mostly on the book of Hebrews. Right before this was that uh, the Apostle Paul is one who's accredited with, with writing Hebrews, but before he wrote what we're going to read, he mentions to the people, the, the churches, don't be like Esau and, and, and kind of squander your birthright and could not undo the consequences of your choice. See, that's, a, for me, a very powerful reminder of what we often squander that God is offering us. In this song... It talks about he, he, he is a pain taker. He is the way maker. He is, he is ready to save us from ourselves. And we oftentimes squander that gift that he's giving us. And so these words of Paul that is actually not part of the scripture just jumped out to me when I was listening to this song. Do not be like Esau who squandered his birthright and could not undo the consequences. Hear Hebrews 12, verses 18 through 29. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, 
to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word, word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we? If we turn away from him who warns us from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised. Once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. That is created things. So that what cannot be shaken will remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. And then in the verse, in the book of Luke, I'll be reading from chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites! Don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated. But the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. This is the word of the Lord for God's people. May we hear it and be blessed by it. Amen. So, this lesson in Hebrews, when you first hear it, it's, you, a lot of people will just read through it. And we'll hear the word Mount Zion. We know that mountains in the city of Jerusalem, in the walls. But really, the, the, the writer is mentioning three mountains in this passage. And I want to kind of connect with those because oftentimes in the Old Testament, what, what do we hear about God of the Old Testament? He's a vengeful God. He's, he's this rough and tough, a God who consumes you, and da, 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 da. This passage, the writer is kind of telling us that God of the Old Testament is the same God that walked this earth, and the same God that the Apostle Paul is talking about in his epistle writing. And he's going to make this connection through using the mountains, not as physical structures, but as spiritual structures. So first mountain that he, he says to us, you have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, the darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged no further words to be spoken to them because they could not bear what was being commanded. 
See, this mountain that he's talking about right now is Mount Sinai. This is where Moses went to, to receive the Ten Commandments, where God's grace is being poured out upon his people with, with a way to live that will be in the right relationship with God. Have no other God before me. We, we know these, right? These Ten Commandments. That's the first one that he's talking about. He's saying, you have not come to this mountain because the people trembled in fear. Even Moses says he trembled in fear. And they, they, they were worshiping God through who? Moses. See, at that time, Moses was the mediator for God's word. And they would go through Moses. And then the Apostle Paul, or the Hebrew writer, says, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. To Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. And to be sprinkled, sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Do you hear these beautiful words, what, Jesus, what is being said here? He is saying that, Sinai, you trembled with fear. You, you, the, the Israeli people just couldn't quite understand, but our God was a God of grace. And now you come to the mountain. He's telling these people that they're, they're at the mountain of Zion. The living God. In other words, he is saying to them, do you realize you're in the presence of God right now? Do you hear today, do you realize you're in the presence of a living God right now in your presence? Do you realize that? Because if, you, if we truly have that experience... You have nothing but to be in awe and reverence. You know, again, I, I, I love singing what a friend we have in Jesus. And that's great. And, and I, I believe people really mean it. But if you have a true spiritual moment with the risen Savior, with God the Father, you can't help but fall on your knees in reverence and awe. See, I struggle at times falling on my knees in all of God and everything that's happening. I witnessed some sunrises that were just absolutely beautiful that, that I, I didn't want them to go away. But it keeps on moving. Life keeps on going. And see, he's talking about you have come to judge the judge of all to the spirit of the righteous made perfect. Who is the one that made righteous perfect? Christ. Christ. See, we are in the presence of Christ, the perfect one. And yet, we bicker about politics. We bicker about this, that, and the other thing. You are in the presence of God, and a church can't get along with each other. That breaks my heart. I was struggling when I was on vacation this last time, thinking how far away we have come from the Word. I see people running crazy, doing things that are crazy. I mean, I had a great vacation, don't get me wrong. I loved every moment with my, my 17. It was very powerful, very beautiful. But there was a part of me that was watching other people just run as if they were the only thing that mattered. They didn't care if there was a little kid here to watch fireworks. They were going to watch it with their cameras and because they're, they're bloggers. They, they take control. Don't they realize in that very moment, even at Disney World or wherever it might be, that the presence of God is real? That he's there? That he wants you? So we have this perfect righteousness, the, the mediator of a new covenant. What is that new covenant? What is that new covenant? Anybody know? The new covenant is what they just sang about. It's that we have a pain taker, we have a way maker, we have a prison shaking savior, one who will break the chains of life. That's the new covenant. And we often just squander that because we see something shiny and green or blue, yellow, gold, whatever it might be, here right now. And we squander 
the thing that can't be shaken. And so this writer writes, and the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Okay, how many, do you understand what he is saying here? You, we all know the story of Cain and Abel, right? And, and Cain kills his brother. And what does Jesus say to Cain? Your brother's blood cries out from the ground. In other words, he is crying out for vengeance. He wants God to take care of what just happened. His blood is crying out. Now we bring this up to the time of Jesus, the new covenant. He spilled his blood, and what is his blood crying out to you? Is it vengeance? Get back at the ones that did this to me? What is it? Forgiveness, for they know not what they are doing. Love, charity, mercy. What did you say last week, Charlie? Micah 6, 8? Love justice? No, seek justice, love mercy, and be humble before your God. Walk humbly with God. That's what his blood is sprinkling. And folks, we squander that. We squander that. And then he kind of gives a warning again. Because the third mountain. Do you know what the third mountain is, right? It's just outside the city. It's on a garbage heap. I think, Charlie, you called it Golgotha. Or Mount Calvary. The third mountain he is talking about is the one that will save you. It is the one that God was on and will always be on. His forgiveness, his blood that sprinkled us all with cleanseness will always be part of our life. You can't do nothing about it. But you can squander that gift. See, I, I hear constantly in, in my journey with the church and with Christ that how many people are seeking a light, a seek, seeking a meaning of life. That they're worn out. That they want a better life. And folks, just believing in God will not give you a bigger house or a better car or take care of all your financial bills. It may. I'm not going to ever put anything past God. But what it will do is give you something that this world cannot offer you. An internal peace, an internal love and a joy that, that, that has no barriers. That's the blood that he's sprinkling on us. That's the word that is better than, than the blood of Abel. He is giving us new life. He is setting us free from our own chains. I know VBS took chains and let the kids break them apart to represent this, Right? And, and that's great. But do they understand what they squander when they're not breaking them? See, how many of you wake up every morning praising God? How many of you wake up wanting to, that, that in your head or in your mind that you're going to break the chains that are going to try to bound you up that day? Now, Charlie said last week that he starts every day with, with Scripture, right? The Word of God. Now, that's, that's a process of starting. That's a wonderful way. I loved how you actually said, so, so God has done all these things for us. He has set us free. He has, he has given us freedom and forgiveness. But what do we do now? Right? I think that's kind of how, how you said it. What, what, what do I do? And he refers Micah 6, 8. That's how we should respond. But I'm sitting here and I'm saying, wait a second. Micah 6, 8 is great too. But there's other passages throughout Scripture that also can, can lead you to freedom. John 13, one that comes to my mind very quickly. You know, where Jesus says, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, love each other. Then they will know you are disciples of Jesus Christ. Folks, once again, I, I'm going back to that Hebrew Scripture of, of saying, how often do we squander that gift when we have the opportunity to, to show love? 
and we don't do it. Instead, we let the world's, we let ourselves show us how, how much we're in the world, which that's humanness, but there's more. So Paul kind of writes at the end here is, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. You know, again, Dan Moore drives it home all the time. I try to drive it home. Many try to drive it home that, that, that we live with rose-colored glasses. You know what? They are rose-colored glasses because Christ gave them to us. And, and we should be living each day in that thankfulness, gratitude of what he gave us. And to so worship God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and awe. See, do you come into this place in reverence and awe to worship our God? Or are you more interested in... So, hey, Les, Wesley, let me tell you what she did. Okay? You know, what are we here for? Is it just for the, 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 the chatter of the... Or do we really walk into here at all? See, at times, there's been discussions within this church which I lean to the actual part of noise... I like to hear the chatter. I love to hear the love spreading out amongst each other, sharing the stories. Sometimes I don't like what I hear, but overall, but there's been argument of saying, well, if we're really coming in awe and reverence, it should be completely quiet. Well, I hate to say something to you, but Christ wasn't always completely quiet, and he was always in awe of his Father. But there's a time and place for everything. And I hear Paul just screaming out, don't squander the opportunity to get your chains broken. To let someone take some of that burden of pain away. See, Jesus comes into this, the gospel lesson that we read with a woman who's been suffering for 18 years. And he's a good Jew, Jesus is. And he had a choice. Because we see the choice made in the scripture. He could stay rightly as many chose to do, strictly with the law. Or he could feel the person's pain and say, right now, you have been set free. <coughs> see, he chose mercy and grace to walk humbly with that person in place of abiding to the law. See, how can we not, again, what confuses me is how people cannot grasp worshiping God. Our God chose to come in the human form. He chose to do that. Again, God had every right to just stay away and judge. Right? But instead, he chose to come and die for us. And the Apostle Paul in Hebrews is saying, don't squander that. He is the very one who will set you free. You want a revival in this land? If you really want that, start acting like Christ. Let the little things go. Let's concentrate on how much love there is how much peace we can have with Christ, the joy. Let's concentrate on the little ones that were singing here on Friday evening. Let's concentrate on the, the volunteers that gave their time. Let's concentrate on the good things that are happening and not worry about what we can do a little bit better right now. Imagine that. We squander the gift that God has blessed us with by worrying about worldly things only. We covered the worldly things with God's grace. We'd still have problems, but people would have an inner peace that you can't get otherwise. So Dan Moore came into my office this morning and just said, hey, you know, I know that you're just going to let the Spirit take me. And I said, my quote was, I'm all done with it. I've been working for two, three weeks with this passage, and I know exactly what I'm going to say. And then some person comes up and says, hey, you need to speak about taking your pain away. You need to speak about a person that can show you a better path. 
You need to talk about the person who take you away from your own prison. You need to talk about Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord for God's people. May we not squander it, but may we live fully in it. Amen. Amen. So I want to go back a little bit that we're going to sing our hymn, There's Something About That Name. If you'd rise with me, and there's something about that name. We're going to sing it twice through. Yeah, it gave me those two, the taps. But when I heard this song, and he didn't sing it the way that we just did in the way, he sang it in the way of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is something about that name. And he went back and just sang that two or three times. And I don't think I could move. Because in the name of Jesus, we have been given all power to be like him. In that name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In that name of Jesus, you are made whole. In the name of Jesus, healing can happen. He is our master and our savior. So at this time, you know, I I know we do things differently. (laughs) I do anyways, because I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes. But I'm going to ask the uh, deacons to come forward and take the offering plates and and as we sing this next song, This Is The Day, I just want you to go out and, and do it. We'll sing it a couple of times through. Um, so just come on down, the deacons or the ushers who are going to be helping today. I know I have two here. I'm looking for two more, two more, two more, two more. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, brother. Thank you. 
you just never know what happens. So today we, we, we looked at the mountains and we heard P P Paul say, don't squander the opportunity. And he says, I'm going to take you all the way to the, the, the Mount Calvary and I'm going to spill my, sprinkle my blood on you so you might live anew. Folks, why wait till tomorrow? Don't wait till tomorrow to have this happen. Let's begin it right now. So I'm going to ask you to stand and, and sing with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And so give with an open and joyful heart as I ask the ushers and the elders to go forth and, and do what you guys need to do as we sing This is the Day. Please rise and join with me. Almighty and holy and loving God, we bring our tithing and our gifts before you today. We pray that, that you look over them and you bless them. We, we, we give them over to you, O Lord, and we, we sing praise music to you. But often, Lord, O Lord, we, we slink back into the day. We slink back into our day-to-day -day lives hoping that gifts meet the expectations of your discipleship. But Lord, I believe you have called us to do more, to speak for you, to allow our testimony to be part of our offerings. And oftentimes, oh Lord, that does terrify us, as your word terrified Moses, as many only thought of you as a vengeful God. But let us be more like Christ that is offering hope. Oh, Lord, give us the faith and the courage to speak of your love, your mercy, and your compassion. Lord, I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So God has blessed us. God has blessed us with each other. He has blessed us with his son, Jesus Christ. And Christ blessed us with the giving of the Holy Spirit. So we know without a doubt, we will never journey alone. God is always present. So as Charlie did, he, he kind of left us with a question. I want to last, leave you guys with a, a different question, but same idea. We know God is with us. People understand that? So what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with the Holy Spirit who travels with us? Are, are we going to share it with, are we going to share it? That means with your husband and with your wife. 
That means with your husband and, your, and he with you, with your children. That means with me, as you have to work with me, and I have to do it with you. See, we can go down. Do not squander the gift. The gift that we can give to each other. A gift of hope. So let us go in peace, knowing that God goes with us, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ go with you. May your hearts be open to, to glorify him in all we say and in all we do. I hope you can join us for Coffee Fellowship downstairs. God bless you.